Hi everyone and welcome to my channel She Says Happiness. I'm Mary Ellen. This is where I chat to you about all things sewing and today is no exception. So today I want to chat to you about a sewing challenge that is taking place throughout the month of March. It is a Sew Frugal 24 challenge run by Sam and Ruan at Frugalissima and the Yorkshire Sew Girl. And I think it's quite a good challenge to take part in because let's be honest, anybody who sews knows that it can be a pretty expensive hobby. Um, from the fabric to the notions, to the patterns, you know, there's quite a few costs that will quickly amount up. Um, and while that's, that's fine, it's something we choose to do, something we choose to pursue, um, I think it's great sometimes that if we can save money, that we do. I am inherently bad at it. I am notorious for not really thinking too much about what I'm spending when it comes to my hobbies. And that is actually why I've chosen to participate in this challenge to kind of try to teach myself something to see, you know, is, is there a way of using free patterns to suit me, to suit my wardrobe, to suit the needs of my family uh, without me feeling like I have compromised on style and, you know, my own sense of individual style when it comes to how I dress. So it is going to be a challenge for me um, because even in my kind of like cursory glances, I'm not seeing things that really, really speak to me. So my video today will be focusing mainly on children's wear because with a one year old, a 14 month um, baby in the house, not really a baby, a toddler, I do like to sew for him. And I know that sometimes People will say to me that it's kind of a waste of money, that kids grow out of things so quickly. You know, I don't see it that way at all. I genuinely love making things for him to wear. And yes, while he grows like a weed, it's not the end of life for those garments. I have a nephew that is several months younger than Henry. And so everything that I make can be passed to him and has been. So, I mean, I made for Henry throughout his first year, little milestone sweaters, which, you know, he really wears for that one day uh, when he turns four months, five months, six months, but those have all been passed on already. And I'm sure my sister-in-law will pass those on to somebody else. So, so there's other ways of being sustainable from garments that do not require child wearing them a hundred times um, until they've literally squished into them for that last wear. So there's a few different patterns that I have picked out that are free patterns um, that I want to chat to you about today. Um, but before I do, I'm quickly going to go over the rules of this challenge, which are really simple. If you want more details, please go across to the ladies' channels where you will be able to get all of the details about the challenge, about sponsors and things like that. But basically a four rule challenge. Firstly, you choose a free pattern, which is the hardest part for me. Um, but there'll be so much inspiration here this month as well that perhaps I won't feel so miffed or overwhelmed um, and I'll get some tried and true by others that I think maybe that I'll be able to jump on and, and use myself. So that's rule number one, choose the free pattern. And actually, when I started looking, I realized how many there are. The second rule is to choose a fabric from your stash, which for most of us, let's face it, is never going to be an issue. It's not like we're sitting there with a dearth in our sewing rooms, are we? Um, so yeah, you're only seeing like the tip of the iceberg here whenever I'm recording in my little corner desk. Uh, there's so much more and I would actually be embarrassed to try and go through it with you because it would probably take up the next year of my vlogs. So we're not going to do that. Number three is that you have to make the garment in the month of March. And number four is that you reveal that garment on the last day of the month, which is the 31st of March. And then the prizes will be chosen, I think by random selection. So everyone is in for a chance of winning a fabulous prize. There are some amazing um, sponsors on board and my video doesn't have time to talk about them all, but I know Ron and Sam have split it in two and there's two videos there that you can go and refer to if you wanna find out more about prizes. So children's wear is my main focus, but there's a few other things I wanna discuss at the end if you wanna stick around. Um, I've got a couple of men's wear patterns to recommend. And I personally have been looking at some lingerie patterns, um, among other things. So let's have a look at a couple of the things that I've pulled out to make for Henry. So 
The first I'm going to recommend are a couple of patterns from Brindle and Twig. They are personally one of my favourite pattern designers for children. I use their patterns frequently when I am making things for Henry. But the first one I have pulled out here for you is the Ringer T. Really lovely little pattern for a quick so um, lovely for using up all those small amounts of jersey that you still have in your stash, maybe left over from projects that you've made yourself. Um, but I think, yeah, it's really, really good starting point if you wanna try out Brindle and Twig in terms of their fitting, because of course, like all pattern designers, the fit, even for children, can vary widely. Um, I have found that it's not bad, it's quite true to size, but I always have to size up or else I won't get any longevity out of those garments. So that's just something to bear in mind. But the Ringer tee is lovely. I'll pop a little image in here just so you can see it. Um, I should look back and find images of Henry, but it'll take me too long. And this, this is gonna be a long video if I start doing that. But yeah, I think this is great. Um, and you can pair it with pretty much anything. I've paired it with their retro sweats and I've made Henry like little twin sets, um, you know, from those things, like almost little tracksuits, really, really cute. And in terms of sizing, I think it begins from birth and goes up to six years of age. So you've got a good few years worth in, in that free pattern. And it also comes with your long and your short sleeve options as well. So pretty good for transitional um, making. The other pattern I want to recommend from Brindle and Twig is the Hooded Raglan sweatshirt. Again, lovely, simple make. Got a scuba, a scuba style hood. It's got raglan sleeves, which means really, really easy to fit. And it's got a little bit of um, faux piping on the sleeves as well, which just gives it a little bit of interest, um, especially being a free pattern. They can sometimes be very simplistic, but I think this one just has enough interest going on there to make it worthwhile trying out. So those are the two that I recommend giving a go from Brindle and Twig, but definitely I just really recommend their patterns in general if you're sewing for children. Another one that I have pulled out because I'm going to be making this myself in the next few days is a pattern from Waves and Wild that everyone knows about, I am sure. It is the Sand Castle Bucket Hat, a reversible bucket style hat. One that I'm planning to make quickly into part of a costume for World Book Day. Um, so it may not be made precisely according to instructions, but it'll certainly give me an idea of the fit and then I'll be in a good position to make that come summer um, for Henry when I'm making it properly for everyday wear. I think as well that it can be made from knit or woven fabric. So again, really good for using up bits of your stash that you just have in boxes, like little off cuts and things like that. Um, I think it looks pretty simple. I've got it here. It looks really, really simple um, just to put together as well. Um, it does involve joining curves, which I suppose some beginners get a little bit scared of, but there's nothing to be frightened of there. Just take your time, do things slowly and go for it. The other Waves and Wild pattern I want to recommend to you is the Lunar Tea. I have made this a couple of times now. Again, in terms of fit, it's pretty good. I love it. It comes in sizing from premature baby right up to four years of age. So you're getting a really good um, little time frame there for free. And it can be made in pretty much any light or medium weight knit fabric. And I know I have had um, quite a few remnants left over in my stash that I've used to make little ones for Henry to wear to nursery. And the thing about the Lunar is that it works interchangeably with a couple of their other patterns that you buy. Um, so you can change up the sleeves and things. So yeah, there, there's just a lot, a lot to be done with that very simple pattern. Um, it is a slim fitting um, envelope neck too. So a wee bit more interesting as well. Another tea that I have found um, just in my searches for this vlog is from a pattern company I'd never heard of personally. It's Misuzu Patterns. And this is the Rowan Tea, um, which they recommend as their starting point if you've never sewn with their patterns before. So the thing about this is that it actually offers a really good size range. So whereas you've got from premature small newborn up to age four in the Waves and Wild Lunar. This pattern called the Rowan Tea from Misuzu 
um, offers sizes that run from 62 to 164 centimeters. So it'll take your child the entire way through their childhood. So basically that equates to zero to three months, right up to 13 or 14 years of age. Um, it's got a slightly oversized fit. It's got long or short dolman style sleeves. Um, it comes with a few wee style options as well. It's got a patch pocket, two different variants of necklines, an optional inside neck banding and two side seam finishes. But they recommend it as a quick, fast sew. Um, and yeah, definitely a staple in the wardrobe. Children will always need t-shirts, won't they? So, I like that one. I'm gonna to have to try that myself. The other one that I want to recommend to you is one that I've made time and time and time again. I actually have fabric sitting here, two fabric sitting here to make this with. So I have this glow in the dark uh, jersey from Minerva and I have this under the sea jersey from Jenny Stitches, which I'm going to make more PJs for Henry in. This is also out because it works for the So, um, so Yellow for Endo Challenge too but I have those out to make the sew a little seam pattern. Um, it's the Movie Night Pyjamas, entirely free. You can join over on their Facebook group and that's how you get access to the pattern for free. I love it. It's got loads and loads of variants. The sizing's a wee bit small. Um, so I'm currently using the two to three for Henry. And to be honest, I might even start making the three. Um, because yes, I know they're meant to stretch, but I also want them to have room there as well as he's, you know, prancing around these days. So yeah, he's in two, two to three at the moment and he's a 14 month. But let's bear in mind, he is incredibly tall. He is, um, you know, over the 100 centile for his height. Um, and, and definitely uh, it's worth just checking out your child's measurements before you make any of these patterns because they do vary so dramatically. Um, but in terms of a free pattern, it's great. And you also get a female version there as well. So those are the children's patterns that I have out for this challenge. How many of those I'll get finished? I mean, let's be honest, who knows? But really good starting point. And a few of them I've made and have absolutely no issues recommending to you. For myself, I have been thinking, I really want to start making my own lingerie, my own underwear, and I've discovered there is a plethora of patterns out there for female underwear. Um, I think partially it's because I have a huge wardrobe full of stuff. I do not need to make any more clothes for myself. That's not to say I won't be because of course I will, but I just thought my time might, or might be better employed by making you know, basic everyday things that one always needs that, you know, I'm still buying. I don't buy any ready to wear fashion, but I am still buying my underwear. Um, yeah, I, I've bought some bra making things in the past and I've just never got around to using those either. But I'm going to start with um, undies, I think. I'm not going to go jumping into my bra making yet. I've just come to the end of my breastfeeding journey. Um, so there, there's going to be changes that need consideration as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to start with undies. So I have a few patterns here which I've pulled out and I'll try a couple of them at least this month, hopefully. The first are the Sozo undies that everyone I think has heard about in the sewing community, uh, which has been graded to cover full hip measurements of 32 inches to 50 inches and comes in a really good size range um, that encapsulates 10 different sizes. So I think it originally had five until it got updated and now it's inclusive of 10. Um, it also includes teen sizing, so kind of like 13 year olds up, which I think is also amazing um, for a free pattern. Um, yeah, it's definitely there for me to try. And it says that there are two methods of construction in the pattern too. So quite a bit of work has gone into this pattern, given that it's free. There is um, the classic version, which everyone knew, but also since it's been updated, it also has an enclosed gusset version which you use the burrito method for to construct which I'll have to try um, just because it's it's a tidier look I reckon 
um, and also allows for even more scrap busting. So I have so much cotton jersey in my stash that I really need to get my way through it. I also have a couple of bits here that I bought a couple of years ago intending to try this pattern, probably when the challenge was running, you know, two years ago. Um, and these I got from the rag shop, just they had these little um, knicker kits. So beautiful organic jersey. Again, it's the yellow Ferrando. And then I have the lingerie elastic here as well, the fold over elastic, if you can see. Um, I love this colour. This is one of my favourite colours, although it doesn't suit me as much as a redhead as it used to suit me, either as my natural brunette or platinum blonde. Um, but yeah, I still like to wear it. So those are the Sozo undies. There are also the Acacia undies by Megan Nielsen Patterns. Um, a low rise bikini style. Um, yeah, and it says the instructions teach you three different elastic insertion methods so you can find your favorite. So again, you know, for a free pattern, there's quite a lot of scope there as well. Um, they are available in two size ranges. So Megan Nielsen also has them in her curve range and goes up to a size 58 inch hip. So even more inclusive than the Soso undies. Um, yeah. I'll have to try those as well. And then of course there is the free pattern from Evie La Louve, which is the Maxine High Waisted Panty. So lots of different styles there to consider as well. Um, and the last one I've pulled out is the Stevie Knickers from Paper Theory, which I also like the look of. Medium rise, basic, um, cut slightly higher at the back and the hips to provide complete coverage of your bottom. That'll do me. Um, I'll have to try those ones. So they scoop down slightly to the front, sitting below your stomach to provide a more flattering line. Who doesn't need a more flattering line? Um, but yeah, it says suitable for beginner or, you know, even for a more experienced sewer as well. And I, I'd, I'd say that that's actually great when you're short on time. That's the kind of projects I actually need to be looking for for myself. And then one of the other things I found just while researching around this topic of free patterns is the Hyacinth Bralette. So this is um, perfect, it says, for adventurous beginners with experience sewing knits. So I'll be fine with that. But I just think that's lovely. Um, and it's definitely something that I think I'll give it a go. Again, it's probably not going to happen this month, but, you know, it's there. For whatever I do get the time to do it. And then I have this fabric that I bought ages and ages and ages ago from Missy Mop Fabrics who specializes in vintage and dead stock and I don't know why because I'm not really like a leopard print or an animal print kind of girl but I really liked these colors and for some reason I cannot get out of my head the fact that this would look lovely as a chemise. So I thought I would look for a chemise pattern that was free and to be honest I'm not having a great deal of success and I would really like to sew this because it's been a moustache so long um, I'm not finding that much success personally. I find a couple of things um, on Mood which of course is a great resource for free patterns. Um, so they have the Hannah Bias Cut Dress which I think you could wear very nice you know as as nightwear. Um, yeah, they're recommending it here for a quick date night solution, but you know, I'm just thinking it's nice for lounging around in and having my coffee in the morning. Um, yeah, I think that that's a possibility. It doesn't require an awful lot of work, I don't think. So I might download that over on Mood. And then the other thing that I found was the Terra dress. Also, you know, more dress than, you know, chemise but technically look the same and this is something that can be made I think in stretch fabrics as well but it is designed to be made in woven fabrics because it features a side sip um, but I don't know there's a couple of options there for that um, I'm thinking even maybe a dressing gown would be nice so if you could think of anything kind of in the nightwear, you know, 
but dressier nightwear department um, that is a free pattern, please do recommend something to me because I'm kind of at a loss and I really would like to sew this up. But this is not the kind of thing I wear, you know, for every day. This is something for lounging around in um, because, as I say, animal print is not really a feature in my wardrobe. So we're getting towards the end of everything that I've kind of been thinking about for myself um, and everything I think about for Henry. So th the only other thing I wanted to do was to kind of check out um, a couple of patterns for menswear because I do tend to make quite a few things for Simon. Um, I make him quite a lot of shirts. I have made him um, pajamas and shorts and, you know, like treks of bottoms and yeah, I've made him quite a few things, lots of sweaters as well. But one of the things that obviously he needs in his wardrobe, like it's just basic in everybody's wardrobe, except mine, um, are t-shirts. And I have made plentiful um, versions of the LB pattern stage tee. He has worn those to death. I think there's only one that doesn't look like it needs replaced. Um, and it's a pattern that I think is absolutely fantastic. It is suitable for anyone sewing at any level really beginner friendly it's basically a, a basic relaxed fit t-shirt for men but also it could be used for women um yeah it's got long sleeve short sleeve variations and it has a chest pocket there optional as well so again a free pattern um you know there's you can't really say anything against it its size range is really good too so like chest measurements 34 to, the chart is so hard to read, to 58, um, with a waist of 26 to 52, so pretty inclusive. And that's just the size chart, that's not even the finished measurements, which are greater. So chest goes up to a 64.5 inch and waist 63 inches, really inclusive sizing. And then the other one, because obviously I've made that a few times, but I thought there must be other um, t-shirt patterns out there for men too. The other one I found was the Sunday V-neck tee. Um, so yeah, again, a really easy to sew wardrobe staple, but I suppose the whole point of free patterns is that it entices people to try your patterns, to get to grips with your instructions, um, just to kind of get a flavour of what it is you offer. And this one I think is lovely. It's got raglan sleeves again, so really simple to fit. It's got ribbing that crosses at the centre front. Um, it can be made in one colour, but it's also designed that you could do some colour blocking. So again, really good for the stash busters. And uh, yeah, really, really nice. I quite like it. And I think... Just like this age tea, it's completely genderless. It could be made um, for all genders. And size-wise, extra small to four XL. So again, Friday Pattern Company, really, really inclusive. And that pretty much rounds up what I have been looking at in terms of free patterns. Now there's another couple of fabrics that I've pulled out of my stash that I would really like to sew with. One of which has been around for a very long time. Um, and it's this Dashwood Spring Hair fabric. It's 100% quilting cotton. I don't really know what to do with it. Um, it's the, the print as well. It needs to be something that isn't very broken. It needs to be a very simple silhouette. So if you have any suggestions of a free pattern I could use to make myself a nice dress or skirt, preferably a dress, then please do let me know on that score. The other fabric I have, again, it's been in the stash for a couple of years, is this beautiful cotton from Jenny Stitches. You know, it's a real kind of like vintage feel to it. And I've been thinking one of the things that I made you know, when I was the height of dressing in my everyday simple vintage aesthetic, I made the picnic set um, by Gertie Charm Patterns. And the picnic skirt is a free pattern. It's basically just a tutorial telling you how to make it. You take your waist measurement, that's about all you need. Um, and it's got a tutorial and everything, and we sew along, I think, available on YouTube. So I might make that. And it came as part of a picnic set. And the little top, was quite cute, it was, it was kind of cropped but fully lined and had these lovely little cap sleeves. So I'm thinking I might actually revisit that and, and kind of revisit the old me before I got pregnant.
because that was kind of what I loved to wear and I'm still very much dressing for comfort and um, I'm dressing because you know I've been breastfeeding as well so there were always practicalities in play which are not going to be there very much longer um, and I think it might be time to explore um, my old self a little bit more but those are my patterns that I wanted to share with you today obviously um, there are so many other vloggers that you can go and check out for loads of inspiration I should probably just look up and see who is going to be vlogging tomorrow um, let me see today there's also just let me so who has been vlogging so tomorrow it will be Stephanie Farrell Focus and Wondering Bobbin um, but the whole vlogger schedule will be available if you just go over and look on um, Sam and Ruan's pages. You'll be able to get all those details over there. So that's me. I'm going to sign out, maybe go and try and think about what on earth I'm going to handle first and uh, yeah. Hopefully on the 31st of March I have something to show you. So again, thank you so much for, for joining me. Hopefully you participate in this challenge. And for some of you as well, hopefully you can win something lovely. Uh, so take care. Thanks again for popping by. And I will be back with another video soon. Bye.